This is the Nightwolf, howling at you, and today we're going to take a look at the Common American action figure from the iconic comics, Common America comic book, which you can get on their website, or most likely when you get new issues, it's almost always on Kickstarter to start with, which is how I got this in the first place. This was a Kickstarter exclusive at the time. I think they had uh, 800 pieces total that they were doing, so... On the side of the box, we see the logo in Japanese. Apparently, this comic is actually popular in Japan as well. Here we got some artwork, somewhat more, semi more realistic, more of the normal art style, and then the American logo. On the back, we have an image that I think needs to be made into a car decal. So, if you guys from Iconic Comics are listening, which you probably aren't, why don't you go ahead and make that as a piece of merchandise right there? to stick on your car, either something for the window or maybe on a car magnet where you can put it on the door. I'd buy it. Charlotte Carly Vanders was a fashion designer whose fateful encounter with a cosmic collision transformed her into the supercharged Henshin hero, shedding her corporate overlords and driven by good old American grit and determination, she is the patriotic paladin known as Common America. Oh shit, there's a sticker on there I didn't notice. By the way, this figure was put together by Loose Collectibles, who also did the uh, Critter figure I had uh, reviewed previously. Collector-friendly packaging. Is it just me or does it kind of look... Well, you might not even be able to see that because of the reflections on the plastic, but it kind of looks like there's a hand in there. Oh my god. You know, I am used to trying to fight to get everything to come out of here, so this is kind of surprising. There also does not appear to be any kind of instruction sheet to go with this one. I mean, some of this stuff is pretty standard, but... What I'm kind of questioning, though, is... This thing... And the blast effect, which I think the blast effect goes with it. I'm just not sure where this attaches. It's got to go on one of her hands, I'm sure. Oh, I get it. It's a lightsaber. Jeez. Oh, I feel stupid. So it's like the Statue of Liberty handle and a lightsaber. I guess. Okay. So, first off, we've got multiple looks we can do with this character. Here we've got our standard head sculpt. She's also got larger boobs than most action figures made today. It's perfectly fine. She's a comic book character. She, she deserves them. And they are separate. We have a skirt piece that we can put on her, which means taking her apart at the waist. So you can either have her in just the plain bikini where we could see her butt cheeks quite well. Or we can add her skirt piece, which fits underneath the belt, theoretically. Problem is, I'm trying to get it under the belt enough so that we can take the bow here and stick. Because so there's this little slot here for this bow to plug into. So if you don't have the skirt on, the bow goes on there nice and easily. But I thought the bow was supposed to also be able to go on with the skirt in place. Because I thought the skirt was supposed to hold fit all the way underneath there. There we go. Because the bow should help hold the skirt into place. Like show. Stick her torso back on her. 
Circle boobs back on her to torso. We got a second hairdo here. So when she is using her powers, her hair is blonde. When she is just Carly, her hair is orange. And in all truth, realistically, should just put that on this head sculpt for the uh, for Carly. Oh fudge. It's kind of slick. So first off, let's go with our basic articulation, right? With the skirt and the bow in place. We do have a ball joint at the head. Uh, with um, There's a ball there, and then of course a second ball inside with enough room to spin around there. And we can swap out heads if we want. Because we also have this surprised... But anyway, so the hair does kind of interfere a bit, so we don't get like fully movable without an issue. We get to about here before uh, we need to start forcing stuff. She so can look down, but she can't really look up because her hair is uh, on the back. We have a hinge on the shoulder. And a spin, which of course is interfered with by the hair. Although if you can move the head just a little bit, you can get the spin fully around. We've got a double jointed elbow. Which, I mean, when you think, look how, how thin that arm is, that's really kind of nicely done. Because I think uh, I think this figure is overall thinner than uh, Krita was. We have a spin at the wrist. And we have an in and out hinge. And actually, you take a look at that. That is a that, that is a better hinge than what we get with most of our action figures. We only get a little bit of uh, movement. This gives you a whole lot more. Of course, obviously, there was the boob cut because we pulled her off at the top. And you can spin her all around. No way swivel. I just popped the skirt out of place again. But we do have the thighs where we can kick out yay far with the skirt on. There is a cut in the skirt, though, to try to help you. We can kick forward that far, and we can kick only that far back. Her butt cheeks get in the way. We take the bow off and move the skirt out of the way. This would be roughly the amount of sidekick we can get from her, so she can't do a full splits. There is a cut at the thigh, which coincidentally is at the top of her boot. We have a double joint at that knee also. We have a hinge at the ankle. And we have a pin so we can pivot around. And you know what? The lines match up pretty good on here. So, And with the whole boot shifting, you don't have to worry about some funky thing where the lines get messed up there. Only when you move the foot around. We have the separate hands. We have the peace sign or the victory sign, whatever you want to call it. I'm not sure what exactly the difference is. We got a couple of sprayed out hands, like, you know, what we usually consider to be like the magic using hands. We have a couple of gripping hands. And we just have a couple of like, uh, kind of openly open hands, which have a little bit of a curve to them. But so it's not like the slapping hand we get with like the shield holders and masters of the universe. But now, if we want to swap out her hands which are pretty easy although these pegs man that's kind of thin and that worries me a bit we can go ahead and put her weapon in her hand
Now we're back to seeing if we can get the skirt back down in place. You know what though, without the um without the bow in place, we could get a little bit more push there. And the skirt is short enough, you still see your butt cheeks. What I'm kind of curious about Okay. So the peg holes in the bottom of the feet are actually big enough for your standard kind of classified Motu style stands. So that works out really nicely. Swap out for her surprised head. And of course, You can just have her standing there as Carly. With her standard head with no mask. And I did go ahead and I picked up two of these because I wanted to display her both as Common America and Carly. Which also means that one of them, I haven't decided which one yet, and will be skirtless. Because again, you know, this kind of works still as the standard superhero super suit where it's just a, a leotard type of style i am kind of curious as to what what they're using inside of this uh the cleavage window here in order to keep it looking like a star and open like that that's got to be some real tough underwire there overall i will admit the figure feels more delicate than i expected the limbs, especially the arms, are thinner than I would have thought. I wish I'd brought Critter with me to uh, kind of compare the two. But I definitely think that her arms and legs are both smaller than Critter's, or thinner. So I am a little bit concerned when I start messing with it that something's going to break. Um, I like the detailing, though, and said you know when they when somebody's wearing this kind of costume you're gonna see a lot of butt cheeks so that's good we got like the cleavage window they weren't afraid to give the character the boobs that she has in the comics unlike uh mattel and hasbro lately with their characters where they don't want to give them boobs at all not that i mean to go on about the boobs that much but still Hmm, actually. Oh, yeah. And I missed on the articulation that there is actually a bicep cut at the spot where the glove shows up. There we got that nice little surprised face going on there. You know what? I may have to go back and take another look at that video because... I think I'm missing a hand. Because there are eight sets of hands here, and I only have, well, I should say ten sets of hands because of the ones that came on the figure. I got three there, and then I've only got one uh, victory hand. I don't know if that fell out, or if it wasn't there in the first place, because I don't see it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know. Uh, Common America is actually a pretty fun comic to read. There's also, uh, to go along with it, a series called Black Hops which is like Black Ops, but only with rabbits and other animals. And hopefully I can figure out where that other hand went if I even had it. I'll have to look in the pictures.
uh, peace and love. Just in doing some of the posing that I do when I uh, for the end pictures and for the thumbnail, I am going to say that hair really does interfere quite a bit with the posing because you can't get her head to look very far forward or up. I think uh, I think its positioning is a bit off, honestly. Probably partially because of the bow and the way the hair curves. Uh, but yeah, it does make it hard because you can't get her to really look up when you're posing her. She always ends up looking kind of down-ish, like right now. Anyway, I just thought I'd add that.